So good news for Gaelic Games fans. There's a brand new series of Lake Red Gale coming your way very shortly. And I'm delighted to say that Jackie Tyrrell and Seamus Darby are both getting their own one-hour specials. And they're both with me in studio. Good afternoon to you lads. How are things? Hi Owen, how are you? How are you doing? So we were going to speak to you both individually. And then we realised that there's a common theme running between your careers. Uh, and that might be a common theme running through this series, All-Ireland Football Championship. And it is the idea of a five in a row. Seamus, you famously ended a five in a row. Jackie, you famously were part of a team that could have done five in a row. I don't think too many people out there actually have sympathy for the ending of your five in a row somehow, and we might get into that. But when I say that word, the F word, so to speak, the five in a row, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Oh, disaster. Um, this slogan that was going around Kilkenny all that, that early that year, drive for five. Um, just the harrowing loss of losing in All Ireland. Um, Taking out five in a row or two in a row and three in a row, losing in All Ireland is absolutely it's, it's gut wrenching. It's it tears apart your inside. You're weeks, months later, you're driving down the side of the road and you feel like just pulling in and crying. It literally it just just tears you apart from the from the inside out. Um, and they're they're things that you'll just carry carry with the rest of your life. Um, and obviously the five in a row then it kind of heaped a bit more hurt and, and pressure on it. Um, Tipperary beating us as well and it just all culminates into a, a disaster of a day and a year for us. Yeah, it must be, I say facetiously there to start, but it still must be fairly frustrating when people say to you, oh, you've won enough, sure the five in a row didn't matter. Yeah, you do, but I, I, I can understand that and it's, 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 it's only natural in sport when someone is that dominant, you look at the New England Patriots and, and, and there's a bit of that about them when Man United were going so well the ABUs um, so I can understand why people you know you want to see new faces new profiles new characters in the game new winners new managers so um, I understand where that's coming from but being at the, re the receiving end of it um, you just kind of have to bite your lip and go yeah you know we, we did have some good days alright uh, Seamus, we just reading the newspapers this morning, Mikey Sheehy was talking about 1982 and he says that the hype was so much that he actually felt fatigued on the day of the All-Ireland Final against yourselves did you realise how much the hype had got to that Kerry team before that All-Ireland uh, uh, I don't think so, really. Um, now, McGee, our manager, would have done a lot of homework. We, as players, wouldn't have known too much about it. In actual fact, I don't think five in a row was ever mentioned at training at any time. Uh, certainly, I can't remember it anyway. And I, I'd say the only time five in a row was mentioned when we were just ready to go on the field. And Eugene McGee said in the final words going out to us, uh, there's history going to be made today. Kerry are either going to win five in a row, or we're going to be the or we're going to be the team to stop them. And uh, that really was the only time I heard five in a row. But then again, on the Saturday night before the match, Eugene McGee, well, he's very thorough in the way he prepared. You know, he's very good at doing his homework. And uh, he had discovered that Kerry down in Kerry, the county board had uh, a bit of an argument about whether they were going to bring the cup for five in a row, whether it was Killarney or Tralee, which of course was a great thing for us to hear. Uh, and I, I would say probably the pressure is on the team going for five in a row. Mm. You know, as Jackie would 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 be able to tell us. Uh, for us, we not in the lose. We were trying to win an All Ireland, and it was our first that we're going to be. You know. <laughs> One in a row, so we, that was our biggest problem was to try and win that Ireland, you know. Yeah, like uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people at home will have seen the players of the faithful documentary over Christmas, and it kind of hammers home this idea that really 1982 kind of gets hammed up as this big shock that happened in Gaelic football, which is a bit of a disrespect to the quality of your team. I, I, I think I think it actually is. Now I wasn't involved the year, the year before or the year before. I wasn't involved for a good few years, but in 1981, awfully, we're in the All Ireland final. Yeah. In 1980, they got to the Ireland semi-final, and you have to bear in mind that Dublin was probably the best team at the town, around at the time with Kerry, and arguably still the two best teams probably ever in the game. So there was no backdoor that time. You had to win the Leinster, you had to beat Dublin. Uh, nearly did it in '79. Had them on the rack. Bernard Brogan scored a goal. They won it. 1980, they won it. And if you tell someone going out in the Ireland semi-final, you're going to score four ten you're going to be fairly happy that you're going to be fairly close or you're going to win it. Mm. And that's what they did. They scored four ten, and they still didn't win. So the following year, they're back again in the final and then beaten by Kerry. Jack O'Shea scored a great goal that just totally put them away. And then they're back again in 1982. So, you know, I, I didn't think it was such a very big shock. No. That team was coming for a long time. And, um, you know, as I said, Dublin were in Leinster, so you had to get out of Leinster and uh, then sit and wait and view his carry. Yeah, and then on the personal level as well, I think some people are very quick to say Seamus Darby came off the bench, came out of nowhere that year, but in actual fact, what did he kick, 1-3 in the Leinster final against Dublin? 1-3, yeah. 
<laughs> well, I came back for the Leinster final, actually. Uh, I hadn't played for Offaly for six years. And um, what really happened was Richie Connor done his knee um, and he had been playing centre half back and Shawnee Lowry was playing full forward. So uh, with the result then that Shawnee Lowry had to go back centre back and uh, they were looking for a full forward and I got a call up and the rest is history as the says. But I, I, wound up, <laughs> I wound up playing in the, in the full forward in the Leinster final, a position that I'd say I never played in my life even with a club. Yeah, uh, and I done good in it. So then I pulled a hamstring near the second half of the match, and uh, uh, that finished me for the other semi final. It was picked full forward, all right, but I couldn't play. Mm. Uh, it's it's interesting looking at uh, Sheehy's quotes today and some of the, the the atmosphere that he paints around the Kerry camp at that time. He says that the Thursday night before the game, they were training in Killarney and kicking around really, and they weren't doing a lot. But then coming out after training, there were two guys selling five in a row T-shirts, and he says he never in his life saw Mikko as animated and as cranky. Or was Cody similar at all around that? I, mean, I don't think you had five in a row T-shirts at all. Kerry famously did. Yeah. But there was nothing to, to tip Cody over the edge before that final, was there? No, there wasn't. No, but the whole thing around us at that time was was the injuries to John Tennyson and sure. Henry Shefflin both had done cruciates in leading up to that. Uh, it was just assumed that they were ruled out for the All Ireland, um, and and even with John Tennyson, he was, and it was only that Henry done his cruciate and that they looked at other options that they kind of said, well, if we're doing it with Henry, may as well do it with John Tennyson, uh, and subsequently he actually played the All Ireland and got through it. So. If that hadn't happened to Henry, John probably would have never played in that All Ireland, which is really, really interesting. But uh, yeah, so for us, it was those injuries, it was the hype. Um, then the lads started doing a bit of work with um, with um, uh, um, the physio Hartman in Limerick, and then there was this, all this hype: Henry might come back, John Tennyson might come back, and then the evening that they did come back to train, and the crowds were were, were crazy. At so. We hadn't t-shirts, but we had this mania going around Kilkenny that, you know, Henry was coming back and that John Tennyson was coming back and that they were going to play. So that was kind of hard to manage. At the time, you know, when you're, when you're, you weren't really in it, you were living in Kilkenny, but you were distancing yourself from it. You know, it didn't take from our focus on it. That looking back, it wasn't ideal, but it didn't take from the fact that, you know, for 70 minutes, Tipperary were just a better team than us and, and beat us fair and square. Um, but it was just another tricky thing for Brian and, and us as players within that to manage that. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's probably, it was t-shirts in, in Kerry. That, that was the kind of the challenges we had. Yeah. Like, it's bad, like, because 28 years on from 82, obviously, the, the role of the media had kind of gone into high promote at that point. There was more, I guess, hyperbole around the greatness of five in a row teams and stuff like that. But then even if you take from 2010 to here and how social media has exploded, like, from a Dublin perspective, this is going to be the most the team has been spoken about in, in the context of a five in a row. The question, though, is do you think it's going to seep into the camp? <sighs> I would look at that Dublin team and Jim Gavin as unbelievably professional and, you know, have all the boxes ticked, but it's, it's, it's so hard to distance yourself from because five in a row ramps it up everywhere another couple of levels. Media, your family, uh, everywhere you go. And as the year goes on, there'll be more and more talk of it. And the more games they win, if they win a Leinster into Super 8, it just keeps ramping up and keeps ramping up. And they'll, want, they'll be trying to distance themselves, but if the whole country is talking about it, and in Dublin... It's going to be talked about everywhere. It, it's so, so hard as an individual to distance yourself from it. Um, but they are, they are ultra-professional, but it, it's going to be a challenge that this great Dublin team haven't come up against yet. They have faced all challenges as regards teams, as regards losing a quality player like Jack McCaffrey. Like, it's amazing looking at that Dublin team. When you kind of compare them and us, I look at them and they lost Rory O'Carroll probably one of the best full backs in the country Jack McCaffrey went off travelling for a year and I was kind of comparing to Howard like if we lost Noel Hickey and JJ Laney in one year I think that would hurt us severely then it was just seamless mm. and the fact that their average age of their team has got younger which ours was going the other way it, it's, it's scary when you actually look at the hard facts underneath the, the four All-Irelands that they've won um, you know so when you kind of compare those things they, they have all they have it in they have it in their hands as regards the fundamentals and the ability to win it. Whether they can actually ma manage what goes in between their two years between now and the All Ireland final, we'll just have to wait and see. And that's that's the great thing about it. Yeah, time will tell. Would you go along with everything Jackie says there, Seamus? I would actually. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be hard for them. Um, I think uh, they have been beaten twice in the league, which is the first time in a few years that they've been beaten at all. And uh, that can do a good thing as well because it can open the rise. And there is teams out there, and as Jackie knows, and we all know, there's a long, a lot of uh, football to be played mm. before now on next August. And uh, 
teams are going to be getting better. Kerry have beaten them. Kerry are on the move again. Mayo haven't gone away. There's a few good teams around. They're not in Leinster, of course. With Leinster, it's, it's uh, you know the standard in Leinster at the moment. They're on their own, really. Maybe Kildare might be able to do some. Hopefully, someone will do it. But uh, uh, I think as as they get nearer to the All Ireland final, it's going to be um, and it's very hard to get out of your head, really. It's because as you said, Jackie, it's going to be talked. It's going to be everyone, every GA man will be talking about the five in a row. The only thing I'd say against uh, when Dublin want to win matches. And that this includes this team. Uh, they still go back for the old tried and trusted, like Kevin McManaman, and you know, and they're you know they're going to the well, and they're a long time around. Um, um, that the, the youth have yet to, to yeah, be the game changer. Yeah, I'd again. like to see them in a real pressure game. Okay, some of them. I'm not saying a lot of them have, sure. have come through it and proven themselves, but uh, there's some new lads on it, and it's you know there's an awful difference when you're winning every game, and then someone has it put up to you and you're really your backs to the wall to win it it's a different job yeah it's, it's interesting what you say at the very start though isn't it about the idea that you weren't even thinking about the five in a row because it's one thing actually being able to go toe to toe with Dublin and then suddenly you're level pegging going down the home stretch in an All-Ireland final and you're the team to stop the five in a row there's a huge pressure in that as well yeah, yeah. of course yeah that's true yeah. Um, like it's uh, actually when you mentioned I, I was actually kind of expecting you to say that that you weren't thinking about the five in a row because there's some uh, amazing I'm not sure if they're myths or not uh, about that team in 1982 going into the thing just like reading today uh, about like the night before the final was it true that you were drinking Brandy the night before the eighty oh, final. I wasn't drinking brandy. No. I, was <laughs> a I had a couple, yeah. I had a couple, yeah. But I mean, it was it was. Really, was a couple, chef. I, I mean, <laughs> I had a layer, <laughs> We leave it at a couple. Uh, no, I had a couple of brandies with me, brother, as a Lord of Mercy at the time, and uh, it was just really. I was wound up, and at that stage, I would have been used to having a few drinks yeah. up and down, and I just thought, really, I thought it was better to go home and sleep than to be at home lying awake all night and then want to sleep and it's time to get up yeah. so I wound up good anyway but uh, it didn't do you any harm it didn't do me any harm but <laughs> if I hit the corridor flag I, I, I hear more about it now than about you. Um, I tell you a funny story about that now we got off the bus uh, going in to Crow Park that day and this, this woman selling five in a row scarves comes over to Richie Connor he was the captain <laughs> of him would you buy a five in a row scarf you know? and Richie being Richie said uh, no not yet no, she had no clue she was talking about. you know but yeah, it's amazing isn't yeah. it yeah. that's incredible like the, the other thing that was said as well about the final was that you spoke to a local curate or a priest, priest and he yeah, predicted exactly what was going to happen yeah, yeah. what happened I there? didn't exactly predict it but he he was, a, he was he's regarded in our part of the world as he was a saint he cured so many people and he just if he told you something's going to happen that would do that would happen and I I rang him he used to be the chairman of the county board um, Father McWee, he was he's dead and gone now, but and uh, I would have known him. He would have carried me around in the car from the time I was a Gosselin, you know. Mm. And I just told him to just. Uh, he always remembered the team at mass, anyway, you know. And I said, just remember me, if just in case. He said, no, no you'll be on, James, and you'll score a goal or two. That's what he said. <laughs> so, <laughs> they're they're exactly his words now, but I mean. Did you, you meet? Did you meet him afterwards, or did he ever? ever uh, I would have met him afterwards. Uh, he would. He wouldn't even think of that. It's what do you not? I wouldn't be that the kind of a man, no. Yeah, and you were, he was clearly right. You were like, what did he? What did you think when he said it to you in the first place? I suppose he thought uh, well, you had a fair you chance. Know, I mean, uh, you know, when this man, I mean, if someone was sick and he, he, he was noted down around Eden Derry and Road and Carberry around that area, like that, if he said to you, there won't be a bother on them. You can take it. There'll be, you know. But if he didn't say them words, you can take it. That's over. Yeah, it that's is. you know that, that was the way it was, and he was. His regards of a sand, really, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the, the last thing I just wanted to touch on, and you've kind of touched on it already, Jackie, is kind of your relationship with the team that you played in those iconic finals. It's very famously uh, a, a big relationship between Kilkenny and Tipperary down through the years. But your relationship with Kerry is very interesting, as in everybody down in Kerry seems to love you. Everybody down there speaks fondly <laughs> of you. Uh, in, in, in kind of, in a hindsight sort of way, in terms of, like I was listening to an interview you did on Radio Kerry years ago, and uh, it, it, there's kind of... Uh, your, your legend has carried down to Kerry as well, and I think were you even down in Kerry in 1981 in the summer watching them train? This you, you were kind of close to close to the, to the, to the camp. Uh, you, all, you knew all about that team basically. I, I was actually. I was down on holidays in Kerry, and I went to see them train in 1981. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, just I was down hanging around, and uh, I was with my wife at the time, and uh, we went in to see them train in Italy. Uh, but that was, was no. I mean, I no one knew me or. 
there was no big deal about it. If only they knew then. Ah, uh, well, if only any of us knew then, I suppose. <laughs> uh, did you no, pick up no, from the train and did you see anything? Or <laughs> yeah, I just saw a couple of the, things, Jack. Yeah. Did you see no, where the keeper stood in the corner that was open? No, <laughs> uh, no, it's just interesting to see them train and that's all. I never I never expected to be back playing with Offaly in my wildest dreams, really, at that stage, you know. But, um, I don't know, I get on very well with most of the Kerry lads, um, mm. as it happens. Now, I'm not saying I'm as popular as you said, but... Uh, <laughs> I do, I get on very well with them, really, you know, and that's grand as well. I meet them here and there, and they're all nice lads, you know. And what about yourselves and Tip? Yeah, sure, I suppose it's the, the classical Kenny-Tip rivalry. Um, it's intense, it's, 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 you know, we, we wouldn't be mad about each other, but then only at the uh, Amanda Stapleton um, uh, charity game that we played recently, we all, you know, as soon as any little Kenny lads were asked, you know, a great cause like that jumped at us, we went up. They looked after us unbelievably well afterwards. We're on the marquee, bit of grub, right few pints, right bit of crack and good bit of slagging. And they had, like, there was players there as, as new as current tip, tip players like Dan McCormick and then you had Michael Webster who we would have played with down through the years. Um, and I think at the end of it, like, when you see things like that, it humbles you and it brings you back to, yeah. it's a game and there's, there's more to life than it. And particularly when you come out of the intense bubble of inter-county hurling or football, you kind of see that there is more to life and when humbling experiences like that. And it was, it was, it was an honour to be asked and to go up there and obviously Shane and, and Paddy who, who played for Tipperary for so long. So, you know, it's, it's, it is when, when, when we do meet each other, it is intense and it is tough, but we know that there's a bigger picture outside of it. Yeah, that's class. Uh, just one final point then, I guess. We've obviously discussed about the, the current empire that we're seeing in football. Uh, we're obviously, I suppose, a few years out from your empire that you created in hurling and the hurling championships over the last couple of years have been so cracking because there's been, you don't know which way it's going to go from a certain point of the season. Do you think that's going to be the, the case for the next decade or so or can you see another back-to-back uh, -back or even a tree in a row happening anytime soon? I would say it's going, it's going to be an awful lot harder to even do back-to-back. -back. And you, you would look at that Galway team going, they have everything, they, they, they have the physicality, they have the players, they had a decent squad that probably came at them in, in, in the end um, but it's going to be a lot harder. I don't see any team coming up and, and, and dominating for two, three years or a spell. Mm. It's, it's too professional. Teams are being analysed so much. The game has just gone to such a level. It, 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 they would want to be an absolutely unbelievably team. And things, everything has to be going right. You have to have an unbelievable manager. You have to have a really, really core group of players that drive that panel on. And we were lucky that we had that. And you need to have a couple of minors or under-21s winning just feeding into that all the time and that's what we had we used to get two or three players every year and that's a lot of boxes to take um, I don't see that there at the minute and I don't see it for the next 10 years I think it's going to be open I think it's just going to be different different teams winning it every year yeah it's, it certainly seems that way and it's going to be a great old year hurling ahead yeah. no doubt uh, Jackie and Seamus thanks a million for popping in and as I say Lake Regale another season is coming your way and both of these lads have a full hour long special coming your way so keep an eye out for that yeah, indeed. Keep an eye out tonight. Sorry, tomorrow night on TG Garrett. Jackie Terrell kicks off the new series at half past nine.